Thank you for speaking to Security Review. Nice having you with us today. Ah, uh, thank you. How are you doing? I'm I'm doing fine. How are how is AI being used for uh, cyber security related threats? So, artificial intelligence has multiple different uses in cybersecurity, and we'll start with the most obvious one. And this is transcends just cybersecurity. It's every career. You're utilizing AI to increase your productivity in our day-to-day workflows, whether it is incident response, digital forensics, uh, penetration testing, red teaming, vulnerability analysis, code review, even security awareness programs uh, will potentially be utilizing AI to you know create customized uh, courseware, uh, individualized for each student. So it is interesting because we don't have all the ways that we know AI is going to be used in cybersecurity and what you're going to be doing daily. It is taking individuals to take a look at the capabilities using, uh, you know, the different chatbots, you know, whether Claude or ChatGPT, you know, Mott Manus, or whether they're starting to develop their own agentic MCP connectors. All these things are going to lead to a very improved cybersecurity, you know, workforce that they're going to be able to do more with less. They're going to be able to move faster and maintain velocity uh, with the adversaries. The second way cybersecurity is incredibly important when it comes to AI and AI implementations is when it comes to model security, trying to figure out ways to make sure that those implementing AI solutions or potentially tapping into those are doing so in ways that are securing the data that they have inside their organizations, that you're not worried about your individual private data and whether it's being utilized in an LLM in an improper way, that the large data models are potentially set up with the proper guardrails so someone cannot potentially convince the model to give answers that are not appropriate or not, you know, in a way that could be used in a, you know, for good way. You know, for example, say creating a phishing email or, you know, be evil is something a proper AI model will have proper guardrails around. So model security and what and how models are trained are essential for cybersecurity uh, capabilities now and into the future. Okay. Uh, what sort of risks can companies face if they deploy AI? without security safeguards? So the risks that AI companies have when they're deploying AI is you take a look at the speed of their deployment. You know, for example, DeepSeek's release on January 27th. And within a week, the majority of cloud providers and AI providers has developed some capability where it tapped into the open source DeepSeek model without any audits, without any rigorous review, but mostly because it was higher power and cheaper. And these two things combined are highly competitive. If you don't adopt the model as quick as your competitor, then you're potentially taking a step back in the race for you know overall hegemony and dominance in the overall fields. But if you move too fast and you adopt a model that's risky or potentially has vulnerabilities in it and you expose your organization to those risks, you're equally taking a risk of the organization. So it's this double-edged sword. Move too fast, move fast enough in order to maintain comp- competitive alignment or move too fast and potentially increase the risk of your organization. This is where, when you end up taking a look at why model security is incredibly important and organizations who are looking at developing AI capabilities need to balance both in order to be able to uh, create an effective cyber capability for both uh, competitiveness for the business and also maintaining a uh, the least amount of risk uh, for the data that they're trying to use. Okay. What does a risk-based AI security framework look like? And how can companies, you know, start building one? Well, it's interesting that you ask about, you know, a cybersecurity framework for model security. So SANS in the past month has developed a guide. A guide is the AI critical controls security. These, this guide essentially was released to allow leaders and organizations to make sure they're able to ask their information technology teams, are we doing these different steps when they're potentially building our AI solutions and utilizing third-party solutions? Are they able to match each one of these steps that we have outlined? This guide is not just SANS created, this was developed by the community. Multiple different authors uh, contributed to it and helped edit it uh, to be able to provide an overall consensus from the community to be able to allow for organizations to be able to ask the right questions when they're starting to utilize AI. Okay. And uh, in terms of accountability and transparency, how can companies ensure this uh, when they're, uh, you know, uh, using AIs? This is where it gets complex. There are not enough example cases where organizations that have potentially deployed an AI solution 
ends up in a situation where a massive data breach has occurred as a result of that AI solution. I think some of those things will need to occur in order to hold companies accountable, uh, usually from a regulatory standpoint, about what happens if data is breached as a result of some sort of AI capability. This is again what's happened over the years with massive data breaches in standard cybersecurity. But as we're entering new AI capabilities that are out there, the regulators will need to know exactly well how and what, under what circumstances, will accountability take place. These are unanswered questions at this point, but what's interesting is that everyone knows they're coming, and right now everyone is kind of driving as fast as you can down the interstate without any speed limits. We need to know what that speed limit is to provide the fastest speed to get from point A to point B, but also in the least risky way, least lethal way as well. Okay. And uh, how close are we to seeing autonomous AI defense systems? Or do you think that, uh, you know, humans in the loop is still the way forward? Well, when it comes, you know, I'll just answer generically, not just cybersecurity wise, is that I don't believe a, that we're uh, ever going to reach a point with AI systems that you're not going to have some sort of human involvement. It's that creativity. It's that, you know, site pick, that partner, that it's going to enable AI to move quicker and have additional ideas that you'll be able to problem solve in ways that you've never been able to do before. So case in point, so I have 13 year old twins, you know, boy to girl. And when I talk to them about AI, I want them to think about, you know, what is their favorite computer game? And I show them how to vibe code. And I said, you know, think about a game, describe it to the AI who's coding for you. And then you're now able to create something that you weren't able to do before just with you deriving that forward. Same thing about, you know, I showed my daughter how to start writing music, usually something that requires a massive amount of artistic background. Now, the more background you have in, you know, music creation, the better you'll be at driving the creativity. But if she has some profound emotion or something that she's like driving toward, she's able to ask AI to say, um, this is what the type of music I like. Here's what I like to drive. So AI becomes an opener of possibilities. So anyone out there with a idea of something that they'd like to create is going to be more possible and within arm's reach than ever before. And to me, that's a very positive thing about utilizing AI, but I don't think AI is going to automatically start creating on its own artwork, music, movies that we're gonna enjoy. It's gonna allow us to be able to not have to worry about the special effects or potentially the scenery that is gonna be involved that creativity element's always going to be there. So whether you're talking arts, whether you're talking financial, whether you're talking engineering, it's going to open up doors that we've never seen before. And I still think human and, you know, AI capabilities together are going to create a future that we never really envisioned before. I'm very positive about it. Thank you for speaking to us. Nice having you with us today. Yeah, thank you. I really appreciate it.